Our scripture today is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. Let those who, ne who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. That was absolutely delightful. It's all been delightful. I could just sit back down and you could play. That <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So our scripture that Jana read uh, just a little bit ago uh, is about the human condition, about ups and downs and joys and disappointments and all the time in between. We are, we are in such an unusual situation in this Advent season. Um, I don't need to explain it to you, you're living it. And we have been dealing with uh, COVID-19 and the very real threat of this virus since early March of this year. You add to that, um, regardless of what side of the aisle you land, a stressful presidential election and, and everything that's gone along with that. And this is just a really, um, it's a unique season of Advent. It's a unique season of Advent. Psalm 126 is a, it's a community petition uh, for deliverance based on the remembrance of God's deliverance from the past. And as author J.L. Mays puts it, he writes, Psalm 126 is about joy remembered and joy anticipated. Joy remembered and joy anticipated. And, and what comes in between? I think joy remembered and joy anticipated is a pretty good description of where many of us feel right now. It's where many of us are, emotionally, maybe spiritually. The death and devastation and destruction that the coronavirus has wrought on our country and throughout the world and on so many different levels is just staggering. And we're not through with it yet. We know that there are vaccines and they've been approved and we're so thankful for that. And it's going to take time to get them to the people. And the people who need them the most are going to get them first, which makes total sense. And it's just going to be a while. And so we need to continue to be careful. We need to continue to, to wear our masks and, and just to distance ourselves and to not be out in crowds when we don't need to be. We need to hang in there. We do. And we've got Christmas coming up and that's the, the Advent season is upon us and there is great fear that there's going to be a lot of travel um, during the season of uh, end of Advent and Christmas because people just miss their loved ones so much. It's just a scary, scary thing. The death, the, the devastation, the destruction that this virus has wrought and here and throughout the world is, is staggering. And we're not through with it yet. And we won't be for a while. In the midst of uh, the chaos, the death, and the destruction of COVID-19, guess who shows up? our beloved season of Advent. Just shows up as if nothing's going on. You know, here I am. We're in the third week of this now. 
And this season of Advent is so special. It's so special and it's so near and dear to so many of us. Well, we're thankful it's here. It's kind of like one of those beloved relatives that we can't fully hug. We can just get close. And we're feeling weary. We're feeling frustrated. We're definitely feeling challenged to experience some of our most beloved Advent traditions, but from a distance or online, or put on hold until next year. Joy remembered and joy anticipated. Joy remembered and joy anticipated. That's what this scripture is about. But what about when we're in the midst of something? Joy remembered and joy anticipated but not right now. Not right now. We've come to count on this time of year. It's, it's beautiful, it's, it's moving, it's celebratory, it's a spiritual reboot for so many people. Everything that it represents, everything that comes with this time of year, this season of Advent, but not right now. Not right now. Joy remembered from the past. Joy anticipated in the future. That's this scripture. And the people are living in the middle. Christmas Eve services in person. Complete with hugs. Seeing folks we haven't seen for quite a while. Because they're not in our pod. <laughs> taking photos around the Christmas tree in the lobby on Christmas Eve. The choir. And all that that entails. And all the singers and all the musicians. And the children's service, the children's Christmas Eve service. Giving and receiving hugs. Singing Silent Night all together by candlelight and glow sticks. Oh, but not right now. Not right now. This is the time of year that in normal non-COVID years, folks who have been away from the church for maybe some months have a tendency to return in the month of December. There are times we refer to these folks as C and E folks, the Christmas and Easter attenders. That is not nice and we don't do that. I don't mean I say that, I don't mean Pastor Jim says that. We don't, we don't say that, but when you hear C and E, that's what it means. Now, that, that was me growing up. Really, that was me growing up. We, we belonged to a little Presbyterian church in our neighborhood and um, I think my parents signed my brother and I up for competitive swimming so that we would be at swim meets on Sunday <laughs> so we didn't have to go to church. I'm ser and I didn't think anything. I didn't know anybody. You know, we were getting exercise. I don't know. It seemed like, you know, whatever. And we belonged to a church because way back then, I mean, everybody belonged to a church. Everybody did. And so, like, even kids would ask each other, what church do you go to, you know? And everybody had an answer. If you didn't, it seemed kind of strange. So I had an answer. I could tell them what church I went to. I just, we never attended. And uh, come early December, my dad would decide that it was time to get back, get back to church, get back to church. And he would talk about Christmas a little bit, but I think it had more to do with the fact that my, my grandmother, his mother, who he was always a little frightened of, was going to be there for Christmas. And I think my dad knew it was necessary for him to be there a few weeks before she arrived here just to make sure you, you're, you're going in the right door and, and that nothing's changed, you know, and that nobody gives him a hard time and says, hey, Dave, where have you been? You know, not in front of his mom, not in front of my grandma. That would not be good. 
So we'd get all acclimated again in December, and, it, it, and I loved it. I loved it. I mean, I wasn't begging to go to church other times of the year, but I loved it. I loved it. It, 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 was, it, was, it was special, and it, was, and, and it just tied into the whole, the whole season. And I, I grew up in Iowa, and, it, you know, it's cold in Iowa in the winter, and it's, it snows in October, and snow stays on the ground until about April. And, and you just get used to it. You, you, you have warm coats, and I mean, and they're ugly, you know, and, and ugly warm boots and scarves and hats, and nobody cares that it's ugly because, you know, you want to live. And so you'd get all bundled up and go outside and be in the snow. And, and, and I got to the point where I was probably sixth or seventh grade, and I liked taking walks at night during the wintertime. We, it was a different time, you know, and it was, I mean, we all knew each other in the neighborhood. There was snow on the ground. Not, it wasn't always pretty, you know, in the gutters it was kind of ugly, but, you know, there was snow on the ground. The sky would be that kind of blue-black color, and the, the stars would just be shining so bright. And, and if, if you've been somewhere where there's just snow everywhere, there's this kind of muffled sound that's, I don't know, it's nice, it's kind of comforting, it's soft. Something softens with snow all around. And, and I, would, I would walk in my neighborhood, and uh, we, our houses were built, these houses were built in this neighborhood at a time when um, a big picture window in your front living room was really very, very popular. And so I could walk through the neighborhood and those curtains, of course, would be wide open, and that's where everybody would have their Christmas tree, in that front window. And I'd go by, and I'd look at the trees, and it was so pretty, and it was so magical, and it was so quiet. And my mom would ask, why don't you walk with a friend? And I didn't know how to explain that this was kind of like magic, what was happening. And, I, and if we were talking it would break the spell. I mean, I tried it, you know? I had friends that I liked to walk with, but it just kind of broke the spell. And so I just, I wanted to do this myself. And I did, and I've never forgotten it. And, and at the time, I described it as mag magical. That's how I felt about it. But, you know, really, what, what I've come to understand is it was mystical, is what it was. It was mystical. And, and I think that kids and people of all ages have these kinds of moving experiences at different times in their lives and can't always put a finger on what it is, but they know it's special, you know? And they, and they know that they want it to continue. And when we start to realize that it's connected to God, something really takes hold. I, I, I came to realize that God was deeply involved in my life long before we talked about God in my household. And, and, I, and, I, and I wouldn't have defined it that way then, but I felt safe and it felt good. And, I, and it was wonderful. This is a, a time of year that in non-COVID years, we would be seeing a lot more people well, we'd be seeing a lot more people here anyway. The pews are empty, but <laughs> we would be, at this time, more people would be coming back to church. And I believe with my whole heart, one of the reasons they do is that it's not just to protect them from, you know, grandma, but, but they know there's something meaningful in this time of year. Not only is the, the scripture familiar and the music familiar, but there's a feeling that's familiar this time of year. There's a feeling that's familiar, and it's, and it's powerful. I've got goosebumps, and it's not cold in here. It's, it's powerful, and it's all around us, and it's loving, and it's beautiful. And, and I, think, I think God reaches out to children all the time in times of sorrow, in times of fear, in times of joy, in times of confusion, just gently, just gently and lovingly. 
this time of year for me was absolutely magical. And it still is absolutely mystical. And I still enjoy taking walks in my neighborhood, but there are times I wish there was perma-snow. Not very often, just only on those walks. I wish that there was snow. I wish there was the, the muffled sound and the crunch under my feet. And I don't know, it's beautiful. And I think about the neighbors back then, and I think about how we all knew each other, and I just, a lot of things have changed. And, and I'm not saying that that's wrong. It's not. I'm just saying that I think because of that, I think because neighborhoods tend to be, not always, but tend to be not as neighborhoody as they used to be because often, you know, moms and dads are both working and once you get home with your kids, you're just kind of at home with your kids and you may know each other's names and stuff, but there's, there's not the close connection. And I think that's what people are looking for in churches. I think that's what they're looking for. And I think that sometimes people are looking for that sense of connection and they don't know that it can happen in the church. But when they start to feel that connection, that's, that's when they know. That's when they know. And I think that that is why this time of year is so ideal for people to be able to be in the pews. To hear that music, maybe they haven't set foot in a church for years and years, but to hear familiar music, familiar hymns, familiar music around the season of Advent, and it, because it, it feels familiar, it, it's something you actually know about. It's, it's something that you probably know better than you realize. And it probably goes a whole lot deeper than you imagine. And with our inability to be here in person, I think, I think we're feeling that. I think there's more of a tug than ever to want to be at the church, to want to be here. And yet people have been incredibly respectful about not coming by unless they absolutely have to. Those of us who have been able to connect online, that's been a good thing. And we've also had the opportunity to connect online with classes. And in the beginning, it seemed like not nearly as good as meeting in person, but when this has gone to months and months and months, we come to understand that we're really thankful for things like Zoom. There are people who've made friends on Zoom in a meeting or in a classroom setting at this church who haven't met in person before, and they're looking forward to it. Our scripture is about joy remembered from the past and joy anticipated in the future. Does that sound familiar? Is that maybe where we're at? And do we have the faith to know that in time, this too will pass? And thanks be to God. Amen.